As a kid, I was always interested in light and color. I don't know why. And I asked my mom, my mom was a chemist. I said, what subject do you have to study if you want to learn about light and color? And she said, you have to study physics and it's hard. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> I think the, the sort of the main drivers were just, I find it very, very interesting. And then I've also always been very strongly motivated that if we do science, we should be doing science in order to improve the state of the world for social benefit, for human benefit, for environmental benefit, not just for interest's sake. So when I started working in this field 20 years ago, the best solar cell was probably about 2% efficient. And since then, the efficiency has risen of the best device has risen to almost 20%. This is remarkable. At one stage, we didn't think it would reach 10. We didn't think it would reach 15. And now it's just about pushing 20. As I was uh, talking in the lecture today, the thing which compromises the power conversion efficiency of organic solar cells is non-radiative recombinations. A photon has been absorbed in the material and it's generated an electron and hole. And rather than being as collected, they recombine, but they recombine through a process that gives out heat rather than a process that gives out a photon. And that is something that in principle can be avoided. And one of the things that we don't really know at the moment is how far it can be avoided in molecular materials, because by their nature, they're soft materials and there's a coupling between the electronic states and the vibrational um, modes of a material that helps this non-radiative recombination to occur. If we sort of take a model of the future and you say, I want to have a net zero planet by 2050, and you give it all the resources that we know about, the model will come back and say, you need to install a lot of solar. <laughs> Currently, we probably produce about maybe three or 4% of the world's electricity with solar PV. That's got to go up to probably more than 50%. It depends how much we get from wind. It depends how other well technologies perform. It could need to be more than that. So I'd say we're an order of magnitude away from where we need to be in terms of solar energy conversion. And we need to get there quite quickly, I would say within a decade or, or two. In terms of implementation, we need to connect this variable source of electricity with demand. And um, we don't always have the electricity generated at the time or the place where you need it. So we need to transmit it. We also need to store it. So we need all of this infrastructure and associated technologies. We need this sort of electrical engineering and storage technologies. And um, those are things that can be solved. There's also other things that have got nothing to do with material science, like decisions made by governments, <laughs> political will, international cooperation. And those things have to be solved at an absolute priority in order to enable the technological solutions, which pretty much they're either there or they're coming along quite rapidly to play their part. <laughs>